Good morning. This is Dr. Bill White again, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit uh, today about joy advancement. This has been a, an interesting part of orthodontics to me, and I worked with a gentleman, Dr. Charles Holt, who did nothing but TMJ work, and I worked with him for years. He would get them uh, out of pain and everything and then send them over to me to line their teeth up so they interdigitated where their jaw was comfortable and uh, that's the that's the hard part about uh, finishing uh, these cases is lining the teeth up or moving the jaws where you need to uh, to so that the you don't bring the jaw back. He would advance the mandible in many, many of these cases. We advanced the uh, mandible, and I saw this working in doing TMJ work, and I thought, well, why not just use this even if their jaw doesn't hurt? Why not bring the jaw out on people and uh, make them look better? So uh, I have done that with people that had TMJ work or people that didn't have any TMJ problem, but we could advance their mandible and it doesn't bother their, their joint at all to do that. And so we have done that with other with people. Now this case that I'm going to show uh, had some TMJ problem, but not a serious one. And I'll show you that on these transcranial x-rays and stuff that we uh, go through with that. Uh, here is the uh, lady. This is after we finish the work. And she's got a nice vertical height of the face. You can see right in there it's divided up very good. And uh, just a nice looking face. And... But this is after we uh, did the work. We've brought her jaw forward now and also opened the bite as we did. She was class 2, something like this, and we moved it out here. And so we opened the, uh, gave her a little more vertical distance in the lower third of the face. Uh, here was her smile prior to the uh, work. And here it is after, this is before we completely finished and built partials to replace her teeth. Now this is a, a tough case. I mean, it's really where you're advancing the mandible and she had no upper molars. Her upper molars were completely gone. And just by cuspids and cuspids and anterior teeth on the lower, on the left side, the molars were gone also. But on the right side, the molars were there, which I'll show you later. Now, this is what the person looks like when they, before we started. I mean, they've a retrognathic mandible there and you need to be brought out. Now you can do surgery on this and advance them and I have done scrubbed in with surgeons uh, doing this type of work and it is really complicated stuff. Now uh, I didn't do the work at all. I just scrubbed in. I did a little bit of the wiring. Uh, I could wire them up uh, pretty good, uh, but uh, I didn't do the surgery at all, but I worked with probably uh, 10 or 12 different surgeons in the Dallas area uh, in cases where we sent them to surgery, but many of them I did without surgery. Now, here's the way it looked after we finished the case, and the person looks so much better that they wear this complicated retention to hold the jaw out there. And if you keep it out over a period of years, the whole thing remodels and reshapes the fossa and the condyle. I think the condyle may tilt backwards as it 
as the jaw is moved out and the fossa changes too over a period of time but it won't stay out there and change permanently unless you stay there all the time if you go back and forth every day uh, it won't ever uh, do that so you can watch what we do here it's a very interesting uh, part of orthodontics and I think this ought to be something that's taught in the universities to do this now here is before we started and this was a uh, five one of 89 so just remember, this is, this is 89 when all these starting pictures come up here. Now this is after we've uh, finished. I'm going to go back and show you these uh, front pictures when we finish. Now there's the way the class 2 uh, was. And there are no molars on the upper teeth at all. Now the two molars that the lady had the second molar came in contact over here on the other uh, on the right side of the mouth uh, you'll see me uh, look off here but I'm looking at the video and drawing on it but you don't see my hand uh, when I do that now there it is again and this is the upper and you can see there are no molar teeth back here at all and the lower teeth kind of come up into this portion of the mouth right there now this looks uh, impossible uh, to do this without the teeth there and it was hard and i had to work with the ladies dentist he and i, I knew him pretty good and he he did the things that I told him to do, and and we actually made the little temporary partials uh, there in the office with just wire. But he he finished it up with some good partials when we got through. Now this back in the 80s, we weren't doing as many implants and all. So uh, this is one reason, and maybe it's a lot more economical and everything to do uh, the case where you do a partial rather than the implants I'm sure it is because some of the dentures now that are done with oh eight or ten implants they may cost twenty and thirty thousand dollars to make a set of uh, teeth you know for somebody uh, anyway we should charge more for this type of orthodontics there's a world of it out there and there's a lot of it and the fact that most of it is not being done now when i look at the uh, lower these molars have over erupted and this one is actually the second molar is touching the gum tissue up above so we got to have some room in there to put these uh, partials uh, now the there are no teeth on here on the bottom or on the top and the tissue almost comes together uh, up in here now as we go and we slide the jaw forward we're going to open it and give her more vertical dimension now here it is looking at this you put the tissue on top of this and this bowler is actually touching the tissues now we put it and built a little uh, temporary partial and put force on it to give some down pressure on these teeth and got this to level out a little bit more in here and give us room to put a decent partial up above and we did, we did the same thing over on this side with uh, both partials uh, just trying to explain some of this you wonder how we did this now here we've advanced the mandible and you see as we brought it out here these teeth would separate and then they'll have to uh, put something here to take up the load and let these teeth come together back in this portion of the mouth but we've advanced it into a class one relation and we moved of course the whole jaw moves forward and we'll show the transcranial x-rays uh, in doing that.
Now here are the uh, transcranials. You can see the condyle in this area right here. And uh, when she opens her mouth, the condyle's in here. And here's the fossil like it is in every one of them. I'm going to erase that so you can see in the, uh, the right jaw the same thing. You can see the uh, condyle. Now here it is way out here, see, in there. Now, uh, and this is after we advance the mandible and lower this down, and we've got these teeth out in right here. I had them bite too on the, the uh, on the when we took the picture here, uh, and now this gives us some room to build the partial and put it in there, and then we would make the partials, the bottom and the top at this position and I pulled it out to class one to do that and we use elastics and regular orthodontics to bring it. This is a gold crown part and uh, this is the crown on top of the gold there. All right here we are in the this is a temporary partial after I line the teeth up pretty good and everything and we've got it in class one relation here and we're letting these teeth erupt together down in here while they're putting pressure back on the back side so it's a it's a complicated orthodontic uh, case and you wouldn't want to uh, take somebody that just uh, walked out of orthodontic school even would have a very difficult uh, time with a case like this. Now here when we advance the mandible the condyle is sitting in here and here's where it was prior to that and I think this is open out in here uh, so I don't want to take too much time running through this complicated type of orthodontics. All right, there it is with the retainer in place uh, and the upper teeth lined up fairly good. She really needs to put another crown in there. This chisure is uh, bad, the length of it and everything uh, to make it really look good. But uh, she didn't, uh, maybe she didn't have enough money to go and crown it after we got through the orthodontics and everything. Uh, here is the class one now, and it was class two when we started. Now there's the uh, temporary, the retainer with a pad back here where the, they're touching the teeth down on the bottom uh, there. Now here it is the lower, and we're working with this leveling it out and lining all this up and everything and now here is the secret of finishing this in other words we advanced her mandible and i had a night retainer that she wore with a large ramp on it in other words when she's sleeping and she would bite together here you you have to Put a ramp on them and make sure that the ramp is long enough that they don't bite behind it. In other words, you can't, if the teeth go up behind it, it'll make the jaw worse. It'll push it backwards and they'll have pain. I've had people come back that I thought I had the ramp long enough, but I didn't. And uh, anyway, you make it long enough where there's no way they can get their jaw behind this thing at night. And so they have to keep their jaw out here all the time. And in the day, they look so much better. And you can put a daytime uh, retainer in there with a little bitty ram. Now, this is the night uh, type deal there. Now, the day one would just be uh, a small ramp. You don't need a great large ramp like that. And this is the night retainer, the day retainer. Now this gets a little bit complicated in orthodontics, so I'm not advising uh, if you aren't really into orthodontics, I would not recommend 
try and do in a case like this or you're going to it'll eat your lunch and now here's the uh, retainers in the re box he kept now this is the way the jaw went together and this is the way we finished it and now here is the permanent partials that the dentist that I was working with made for it with her batting in this forward position. I sure wish we could have gotten a better crown, but this is what she had and she, uh, we, we made it work. We brought it out to class one. Now, this prevents you having to do surgery. Now, I've put table clinics on it to Dental Society on doing this and uh, I've had a, a surgeon that probably wasn't getting all the work he wanted and said, well, what are we going to do? Well, we don't do this on everybody, uh, but this is where she was biting when we started and there it is. In other words, we advanced this mandible. This spot right here was under here. And when we did that, this open, these teeth were up here. They went out here, and this dropped this down. We leveled this a little bit, and then we put a permanent type partial in that area there. And there it is in class one, see. And the same thing over on the other side. You see this tissue is almost together here. But when we slid the jaw up to this advanced class one position and then held it there with that ramp, then you have something like that. I didn't get over to the side, but you can see we had room enough to stick the two upper and lower teeth in the posterior part of the mouth and that's uh, I think that may be the end of this part of it well there's the uh, top and there it is with the final partial in there and we didn't even wear a retainer back on that this is a kind of retainer for the bicuspids and the teeth here will stay back as long as she's got good lip pressure uh, this uh, partial is a kind of a partial retainer too. And here was the uh, finish deal. But this is more serious. I'm going to run back here just for a minute to where we started. And I'll show you the difference that it made in this person's mouth. You see. And here she was when we got through with it. Now this makes such a difference in it and it's with no surgery in other words if you'd done the surgery on this you'd have uh, there about forty thousand dollars doing that and so really if you do the orthodontics you could charge a good bit more than you normally do but this is what we do and uh, i think there's a ton of this type of work out there and there's very little of it being done. So I'm going to hush here and uh, close this thing up. So thank you for watching. Hope you'll join our group and uh, subscribe to our channel. Thank you now. Bye-bye.